Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session as a preview of Blackboard Ultra. Today, we're specifically looking at the redesigned Ultra course view. This is a preview of the upgrade that's coming here at NIU in May, and we'll talk a little bit more about the timing and the, the, the way that that's going to work as we go. But first, you should know about me. I am Stephanie Richter. I'm the Director of Faculty Development and Instructional Support here at Northern Illinois University as part of the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center. If you have any questions or needs around how to use Blackboard in your teaching, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or anyone on our faculty development team. As we get started thinking about the, the next direction and the next stages of Blackboard. I wanted to first talk about where we are now. At NIU, we've had Blackboard for, oh goodness, 18 years now. Uh, so it's been around for a long time and growth has happened really organically and naturally. So as of fall 2018, 90, over 97% of our students used Blackboard for at least one course. And nearly 95% of those who teach at NIU use Blackboard for at least one course. That overall works out to about 83% of course sections use Blackboard and four and a half courses on average per student in Blackboard. So if you were ever on the fence and wondering whether um, Blackboard is being used, it is certainly being very widely used here at NIU. As we dig into Ultra in more detail, I do want to point out that we have a wealth of information available. Uh, right now, this is primarily focusing on our uh, base navigation that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, there's a little bit less right now on the course view, but we're working on that and should have that up later this week. So let me put that URL into the text chat to make it easier for you to click on. niu.edu slash blackboard slash upgrade. This website includes some highlights of the Ultra experience overall, some tutorials, and information on the upcoming workshops uh, about Blackboard Ultra. And I will put this slide up again at the end so that you can refer back to that URL if you need to. But let's talk about Ultra. What do we even mean by Ultra? Uh, it, it sounds flashy and it's a little bit of marketing speak, I know, but uh, it's the, the most significant upgrade we've made to Blackboard here, the biggest change to Blackboard in almost 10 years. Uh, back then we did a, a switch from Blackboard 8 to 9.1 and we called it Next Generation. And that was a, a very significant change at the time. But in some ways, this is an even bigger change, and it's a more exciting change because it's making Blackboard, bringing Blackboard in line with what we see and expect every day from the modern web, whether you're using a social networking site or you're shopping or um, you're trying to work with your bank online. All of these systems are, are much more modern and intuitive to use than, than honestly Blackboard has been because it's an evolution of this product. So we're going to look at just how exciting and new this is. Speaking of that uh, current experience, Blackboard has rebranded it as the original experience. Think of this like Coke Classic, a uh, little throwback, a little retro. But original just means that this is what um, we're already using regard with Blackboard. Uh, and it's essentially remained the same for nearly 10 years. It has evolved, it has changed, it looks a little different. Ours, for example, doesn't quite look like this uh, standard stock screenshot from Blackboard, but it is fairly similar, and it's been similar, like I said, for quite some time. As a first glimpse at Ultra, the Ultra experience, on the other hand, is a brand new user experience that is more modern, more intuitive, it is simpler, and it is personalized for you what your role is at the institution and what uh, your courses are doing so that no two people will have quite the same experience with the ultra uh, base navigation and, and landing page here. Overall, Ultra is characterized by simplified workflows. It is fully accessible and it is more responsive uh, and it creates a really consistent experience whether you're using Blackboard Learn, which is the actual course system, Collaborate, which is this web conferencing tool, or the Blackboard or Blackboard Instructor mobile apps. 
There are three components, and you've heard me talk about each of these already. Uh, the ultra base navigation is what you'll see when you first log into Blackboard. And then there are two options for course view. The original course view, which is the default experience for courses, or the optional ultra course view. And that's what we're going to spend most of our time on today. Overall, as I mentioned, Ultra is more modern, more personalized, more intuitive. You'll hear those words, I think, quite frequently today. Uh, but it's also then, as I said, more responsive on mobile devices. So both the uh, overall experience with the navigation as well as the Ultra course view, you'll find that you can actually log in from your mobile device in the browser as opposed to one of those mobile apps and still have a really robust and, and consistent experience. So you'll see the same thing, just resized for the smaller screen. Blackboard also recognizes that faculty and students both have a fairly fragmented or uh, broken up experience when they're working with Blackboard because everything is broken, is divided up into individual courses. However, that isn't the way that faculty or students think about their teaching and learning. Uh, it's an overall experience, right? And you have to balance the demands of multiple courses. And that's tough to do when you experience those courses completely separately. So a lot of the Ultra experience is about consolidating information from across all of the courses you're working with into single displays and dashboards to make it easier for you and for your students to balance that workload and keep up to date. For example, this is the grades page. So for a student, they would see all of their current grades across all of their courses. And for you as a faculty member, you would see all of the courses that you are teaching and where the, the grading workflows are at. If you have items you need to grade, what your average grade is for your students in those courses, et cetera. Another great example of that consolidation and the personalization is the new activity stream. So with the activity stream, you get really quick access to the most critical information from all of your courses. This also demonstrates that personalization because what's important to a student is different than what's important to a faculty member. So for students, the activity stream will highlight things like overdue or upcoming due dates, new material that their professors have posted in their courses, new announcements in their courses. Whereas for a faculty member, the activity stream will highlight things that are relevant to your teaching, such as, for example, the um, any submissions that students have made that need to be graded, anything that uh, where students have sent you a message or they've posted to a discussion board, and you need to be able to monitor and keep up with that. But even more than that, more than just bringing that information together, the new Ultra experience also makes it easier for you to, to jump right in and take action on that. So from this activity stream that consolidates information together, you can actually jump straight into an assignment or a discussion or a piece of content with one click right from that, discuss that activity stream. So for example, the student has an overdue organic chemistry assignment. And so with one click, they can click on that assignment, go right into the, um, the submission page and get that turned in as soon as possible. Uh, it's much easier than seeing that due date come up, going into the course, finding the assignment, and making the submission. They can do all of that from right here. There's a lot more to the ultra-based navigation, but because this workshop focuses on the course view, I don't want to spend more time digging into it. So while this is a really quick overview of all of the other components of the base navigation, what I would actually recommend is if you haven't done so already that you attend one of our workshops on the ultra base navigation. The next one is coming up on Monday, May 6th. So again, you can register for that directly at our workshop page, go.niu.edu slash ultra hyphen workshops. And I've put that URL into the text chat as well. Uh, that page lists not only that workshop, but all of the other upcoming Blackboard Ultra workshops. We've compiled a flyer of all of them, and that will go out soon to you via email. But for right now, you've got some insider knowledge on the next time that you can come in and learn specifically about the Blackboard Ultra navigation. That was a really whirlwind tour. <laughs> uh, there's so much more to get into. But I'm really excited 
for Ultra, the real power comes from the, this new optional course view. So let's talk for a moment about original versus Ultra. So every faculty member, every instructor, everyone who's teaching a course will by default get the original course view. And then they can make the choice if they want to enable the ultra course view. So the nice thing about this transition is while the base navigation, that overall experience is changing significantly for everyone, the course experience is something that you can take at your own pace. So you can make that decision when you're comfortable and when you're ready uh, to make that change. So you're not forced into a new system uh, straight away. As I mentioned, the original course view then, which is the default experience, is the same course that you've been using up to date. You're familiar with this. There are really no changes to the features or the workflows in continuing to use an ultra course. Blackboard is still maintaining this original course view and will continue to do so into the future because you have to have moved to Blackboard's cloud hosting in order to enable Ultra. Our, our upgrade actually last year moved us to the, the cloud system specifically so that we could eventually get to the Ultra course view. It also helped us save uh, significant money as an institution because the servers we were using to host Blackboard needed to be updated. And so we um, avoided that cost by uh, moving to the cloud instead. But until all of the institutions that use Blackboard move to the cloud, or at least the vast majority of them, the original course view will continue to be available and maintained and updated. So while there are no changes to the features or workflows right now, it is likely that there will be new features coming available in the future. The ultra course view then is the new experience. It's optional, as I said, and the timing on when you make that change is fully in your control. Just like the base navigation, the ultra course view is more streamlined, it's more intuitive, it's easier to use, and it lets you focus on teaching, it lets your students focus on learning, and not worrying about what's Blackboard doing and how do I use Blackboard. As I mentioned, for the base navigation, Ultra is also fully responsive, so students can log in and access the course, and you can log in and access your course directly from the browser on your smartphone or on your tablet, as opposed to using the mobile app. And then Ultra started two years ago. It's been available for quite some time, but with a very small set of features. So original Ultra has been growing and Blackboard has been regularly adding new functionality and enhancements on, in fact, a monthly cadence. So there are new features and new changes coming all the time that make the Ultra experience even better and even more innovative for, to enable ways, uh, new pedagogies for you to use with your students. As you get started with the Ultra course view, I do want to point out that there is a conversion tool. So if you have your content built already, you could start and build a course from scratch in Ultra, or you can convert your existing content and assessments over to Ultra. The conversion tool lets you convert it and then preview it before you commit. So once your course is converted to Ultra, you can go in and look at it if you like it, and then either commit to using the Ultra course view or go back to the original course view. I will say that in that conversion process, not everything happens cleanly. So you may need to convert and then adjust your course, or you may want to clean up your course in original and then um, actually make that conversion. One of the upcoming workshops in July is going to be on exactly this, on helping you convert your course, prepare it, convert it, and then uh, create the new one going forward. Hal, you have a great question. If you create a new course directly into Ultra, will students be unable to view it in the original view? Yes. So the course view that you choose for the courses you're teaching is the course view that students are locked into. So if you're using the original course view, students can't choose to use the Ultra course for your course. You choose whether your course and your students then engage with the original course view or if they use the ultra course view. Hopefully that answered your question. So looking at courses here, um, this is the courses page in ultra. I have a 
made a fake geography course. So I'm not sure if anyone here is a geographer. My apologies if I have built a nonsensical geography course. I tried to follow a standard geography text, uh, but that's the example that I'm using. So I'm going to go into this world geography course in order to give you a, a look and really dig into those features. So when you first come into an empty ultra course, this is what it looks like. So there are a couple of things here that I really want to feature. First of all, notice that it is simpler. It is cleaner. Being white and bright and open makes the course more relaxing from a user interface experience. And it makes it easier to focus on the material that's in the course and the learning that students need to do as opposed to seeing that, um, trying to figure out how to navigate within Blackboard and trying to learn how to do that. This page is broken into a couple of sections. The first is the details and action pane at the left. This is probably similar to the control panel that you've been working with so far, but it's much simpler. You don't have that long list of tools to work with because a lot of those tools are embedded within other workflows. So I can view a roster, I can make some groups, I can choose whether my course is open or closed. Um, I can join a Blackboard Collaborate course room or I can schedule an upcoming session. I can take attendance, make announcements. All of those types of activities occur in that details and action pane. And I also wanna point out what's uh, perhaps obvious but, but really kind of cool and new is just above that, for if you have created a profile in the ultra base navigation then your profile photo will show here in the course so whether it's a photo of you or again of your cat or of your uh, favorite um, vacation spot wherever whatever you've chosen to represent you it gives your students a peek of who you are and a way to connect with you and associate that course with you in the middle of your page here is the course content timeline. So this is where all of the content or assessments of your course will be. This is where you build out your course. And we'll spend quite some time today looking at how that happens and what that looks like. In the upper right corner, you have more of your course tools. So the, the first book icon is for your course content. The calendar comes next. The talk bubbles, the conversation bubbles are the uh, discussion, the pen and paper is for the grade book or for students to view their grades. The uh, letter, the envelope is for sending messages and the pie chart is for some of the data and analytics. Uh, Prashant, excellent question. Can you customize items under details and action section? So as the faculty member, no. What's there, um, though it reflects what's enabled institutionally for you as tools. Your students won't see all of these items either. They'll see fewer, like they won't be able to mark attendance, they won't be able to create announcements, but they can uh, access announcements. They also can't open or close the course, things like that. But institutionally, uh, det we determine what tools are available there and that's how they get populated there. Excellent question, thanks. So before we dig into specific features of Ultra, um, I want to be very clear and transparent that Ultra does not have all of the features that original course view currently has. You'll be able to continue using those if you use the original course view, uh, but there are times where a feature that you might use is not yet available in the Ultra course view. However, at the same time, Ultra has a lot of features that original course view does not have. So as we go through the rest of this session, I'm going to call out things that um, aren't yet available in Ultra. They might be coming soon. Again, Blackboard is working rapidly on the, the development timeline for courses for the Ultra experience. It might be something that they've redesigned in a new way, or it might be something that very few people use, and so it's been a very low priority. It may take some time for it to be developed, or it may never be developed. And I'll try to highlight some of those as we go. I will also call special attention to new features in Ultra that don't exist in original. Usually with a preview session like this, we focus entirely on new features and capabilities. 
But I think in this case, because ultra is so significant of a change, we need to take some time to look at the things that you already do in your courses that you need to be able to continue doing in ultra. So we're going to start looking at the content and the materials that you build into your course. When you build a course, um, you can just simply post a bunch of files, but that's difficult for students to navigate. So I would strongly recommend using either learning modules or folders in order to structure your course. Here I've created um, three modules. You can see that the first one is visible to students, the second two are not yet available. I've put date restrictions on when those will become available. To view content in your course, students actually just click on the header and that opens and closes the modules and folders within the pane, within the same page view. So again, to make navigation easier, students aren't going from one course menu item to another. They can see all of the content in a single page, but collapsed or open so that they can focus on what they need to see most. So those were mo modules. Next up then would be folders. So this is what a folder looks like. It's a little bit um, smaller. It takes up less real estate than a module, which is bulkier. Uh, but it doesn't have that gray heading bar. It's not quite as easy to see, in my opinion. And when a folder's open, the, I like that the icon actually changes. <laughs> so it goes from a closed folder to an open folder. I just I don't know why that amuses me so much. But so here, then, you can see in gray the content that is in that folder. Uh, and again, you can open and close multiples of these. So you can see all of the content that you might need to as you're looking for a particular file or a particular assessment. I also want to call out, I'm not looking at it in detail, but there is a batch edit feature here in the upper right. This lets you do things like make uh, several folders or several files or several assessments open or closed, visible or hidden from students as a batch product. Um, so you don't have to do them one by one. One limitation that you're going to run up against in Ultra is Ultra courses can only have two levels of folders. Uh, what that means is if you think about your current course, you have a course menu. So let's say you have the course content area that would be considered a folder. And then within course content, you have several folders for units, unit one, unit two, unit three. And then in unit one, you have a folder for assignments, you have a folder for readings. I've just described three levels of folders, the course menu, the unit, and the folders in the unit. Ultra will only let you have two. So if you noticed in my description, I didn't have a folder for units and then subunits. I laid them all out individually. The reason why Ultra restricts you this way is actually by design so that the course is easier to navigate. Creating those multiple levels of folders, honestly, most of the time, just makes it more difficult for students to find what they're looking for. So by restricting you to two levels of folders, you can have a unit folder and then an assessments and a readings folder within that unit. And it makes it much easier for students to navigate and to find what they're looking for. So the solution here is just reduce the number of nested folders. Um, it will require reorganizing some of the materials in your course. And if you're converting a course, we recommend doing that in original, then converting it, um, because you'll have less to move around in Ultra then. Uh, at the course conversion workshop, or at one of our open labs, or even at a one-on-one -on -one, um, consultation and conversation with us, we'd be happy to walk through what that looks like for your course and help you make some decisions about how, how many folders and, and what folders you would use in your course. So one of the, the big benefits of Ultra compared with Original is you don't have that menu at the top to add content or add assessments. In order to add content, you have these plus icons that appear in between each content item that you've created. So whether it's a file, a folder, an assessment, they, they actually appear, um, let me try to draw one, like a little tiny plus right here along this, this line. So here I've clicked that plus in order to start creating some content. And you can see a few of the options that you have available then when you're doing that. And we'll look at several of these going forward. Uh, Sharif, I did see your question. Is the course conversion tool available now? It isn't. It won't be available until after the upgrade's done. So. Um, 
once the, the upgrade occurs, it'll be over Memorial Day weekend, then you'll be able to work with that course conversion. One other way that you can add content to your course, if you're just uploading a file, I'll go back. You may have noticed that there is an upload option here on this screenshot to be able to upload a file to your course. However, you can also use drag and drop. So if you have your browser open and you have your, your file explorer, um, your folder open separately, you can take that file and just drag it right into Blackboard. It's super easy, really intuitive, and much quicker than going through all the clicks to upload files. When you upload something or you create something in Blackboard, by default, it's hidden from students. And then it's up to you to make it visible. You can do that when you create it. You can do it after. And you can use that batch edit feature to do that for several things at once. But I like the language here. So it's visible to students. It's hidden from students. Or you use conditional availability. So visible and hidden are very straightforward. They can see it or they can't see it. And then conditional availability lets you set parameters for when they could see it or under what circumstances they could see it. For example, you could set a date and time restriction so they can't see it until a certain date. You could set a performance restriction. They can't see module two until they pass the quiz in module one. Um, or you can set for a learning module, you can set a sequence availability where they have to look at each item in that module in order in order to move on to the next. So I have to do the reading and open that file before I can view the assessment, before I can take a quiz and I have to go through that in order. Conditional availability is essentially adaptive release, but I like the conditional availability term um, better personally. In addition to uploading files to Blackboard, one other way that you can create a content, you know, that you can create content for students in Ultra is using a document. So a document is basically like creating a mini web page, but you don't need any web authoring knowledge or experience. So when you're creating a page like this, when you create a document, you give it a title up here in the upper left, you then start adding various content items or content blocks to this page. So for example here, I have the map is one content block, this box of tests, text is another, and this file that I've uploaded is a third content block. So you can build all of that out in sequence, and you can do that in any order. I could have started with text, then added an image, then added a file, or vice versa. But it lets me build out essentially my own documents and content right in Blackboard that displays directly in Blackboard. And you'll notice again I have the, the plus symbol here in between that lets me add that content wherever I'd like it to go within the structure of this page. Ultra Course View also features a new text editor. This one is more responsive and easier to use than the existing one but has the same feature set. So you'll see here, I can add text, I can add formatting for that. It does still have a, uh, a math editor. If you use equations and symbols, you can add images and videos and hyperlinks and all of the things that you would normally do on a regular basis. So Hal, you say you have some HTML content that you've authored in Captivate that you've been able to upload and display in Blackboard courses. So that's actually one of the limitations of, uh, of Blackboard Ultra. And I can't remember if it's one that I'm highlighting or not. I don't believe it is. Hey, it's the very next slide. Check that out. You cannot edit or put HTML code directly into the text editor. Um, and the reason for that is because Blackboard is trying very hard to ensure that the content is um, accessible and is uh, mobile responsive. So in the past, uh, tinkering with the HTML code has often caused issues that break either the accessibility or the, um, the mobile responsiveness of the content that goes into Blackboard. So what I would suggest is either here, instead of using HTML to control the way that it looks, you can build that directly in Ultra using the document editor. Or if you have the HTML content already, you may put it on 
uh, a different server or on a different website and link to that instead of trying to put it directly in Blackboard. But for HAL in particular, um, I would recommend maybe coming in and working with us. Again, iframes aren't something that you can access or use in, in Ultra because they're trying to um, ensure all of the accessibility and the mobile responsiveness. But one thing you can do in Ultra, how's that for a segue, that you can't do in Original is connecting to cloud storage services to bring files into your Blackboard course. So while you may have those files on your local computer, you could instead, for example, store those in your OneDrive for Business account that's associated with the university. You have um, a significant amount of space there free that you can use to store your files, and then you could access those from anywhere on any device. Um, if you've been a Dropbox user, or maybe you've used Google Drive, you can keep your files in those cloud services, connect them here in Blackboard, and then you'll be able to navigate and pull in your files directly from those services. I also want to talk for just a moment about copying content, because that's something we see quite often with faculty. Um, once you've put all of your time and effort into building a course once, you want to be able to reuse that going forward. And currently in Blackboard, you do that by going to your source, the course that has all of that content, and the course copy feature pushes that into a new course. Ultra reverses that and, I think, makes it much simpler to work with. So if I want to use content from another course in this course, whether that is a file or an assignment or a test, I come, I'm in my course, I'm building my new course. So I use the copy content option to create content. And then I can search through my old courses to find what I'm looking for. So in this case, I have taught this same course in both spring and summer. I could go into my summer course and not just copy in the entire course, although I could, for efficiency, copy in the entire course, I can go in and pick a one single assignment and pull that into this course, or pull the test that I used two years ago into the course, um, rather than doing this large uh, push of content, I have much more flexibility in how I copy content. Now, I will say, if you're going from an original course to an ultra, you would still have to do that big course push. But ultra course to ultra course, you can use uh, this new copy content feature. So for another feature that is still in progress for ultra, um, and that specifically relates to content, the, the various publishers like uh, Pearson, McGraw-Hill, Cengage, they are still working to update their integrations and their tools to be compatible with the ultra course view. Um, so if you use the, the Pearson My Labs, for example, or Cengage's um, has a couple of different tools that they use, those are currently not compatible with Ultra. They are working rapidly, the publishers and Blackboard partnering together in order to get those updated so that they are. Um, but in the meantime, if you rely heavily on publisher and materials, and specifically the integration, um, the best thing to do is probably wait for those updates before you move to the Ultra course view, which would just mean continuing to use the original course view for a little bit longer. You could also use the publisher material separately on their website in their platform without the integration by creating a link to that page. Um, you lose things like students would have the two accounts and they have to sign in twice, um, as well as the, the gradebook data, the assessment data wouldn't be pushed back to your Blackboard course. So it's obviously not an ideal solution. But if you really want to use the Ultra course view and the publisher materials, right now that would be the, the best way to do so. Otherwise, as I said, you may want to wait to make that, that switch over. So let me pause and see if there were any other questions um, about content. I know I didn't cover everything. Um, there are a lot of great features related to um, incorporating things like YouTube videos into your course. The content collection still exists, so if you have files in your content collection, you can still bring those into your courses. But I tried to hit the highlights of what seemed to be the most important topics related to content in Ultra. Some things you've been doing all along and some things that are brand new and kind of exciting. 
Well, seeing no action there on the, uh, the text chat, let's move into assessments next. When you open that create menu and you just choose to create content, I didn't demonstrate before that you get this sidebar over your course with the options that you have available. And one of those blocks is for assessments. Now, there are, of course, multiple tools that you can assess in Blackboard, such as discussion boards, where you can have a graded discussion board. But Blackboard actually categorizes those as participation and engagement, not as an assessment. So the two primary assessment tools are a test or an assignment. And today, I'm going to walk through an assignment as a, a demonstration of what's actually used far more widely here at NIU. So for an assignment, this is what the creation page looks like. Walking through a couple of things, you'll see that I've created a title for this assignment. I could adjust the availability here in the upper right as I'm creating it. When I build my assignment content, this would be, for example, adding the instructions as text or as an attached file. Um, again, I get uh, the complex editor where I can add text and add files and build that out for students to let them know what this assignment is about. Uh, the settings here we'll look at in just a minute to the right. You would edit these by clicking on any one of those settings or clicking on the gear icon. But one other feature that I want to point out over here is this submissions arrow. This doesn't come into play when you're creating your assignment, but it does come into play when once students have started submitting. So if you click on an assignment in your course, you can view the assignment that you've created, make any edits to it, and you can jump from there right into anything that students have submitted for this course, for this assignment, rather. So you can get to that from the activity stream. You can get to it from the grade book that we'll look at in a minute. But you can also get to it from the assignment itself. So you can jump back and forth between what were the instructions and what would, did the students submit. Um, which is really nice. It, it just adds another level of simplicity to those workflows. So let's talk about the assignment settings. Uh, most of them are very familiar, and they are things that you have seen before. Um, I didn't specifically highlight the due date, but I do want to draw attention to it. Because the due date um, influences so many uh, aspects of Blackboard, like whether or not an assignment goes on the activity stream, whether students are marked, uh, as past due so that they get, um, they, it draws more attention to them to that past due assignment, is really all driven based on that due date. So if you haven't been using due dates, I strongly encourage you to use them going forward, whether you're using original course view or uh, the ultra course view. But two things that are new that are ultra only. One is class conversations, and the other is collecting submissions offline. So class conversations, if you enable that, and you, you can choose whether or not to enable it, creates a discussion forum essentially just about this assignment. That doesn't go into the discussion forum overall. It stays here with this assignment. Um, but it allow, allows students then to ask questions about the assignment. For example, maybe they, it wasn't clear whether they needed citations or how long something should be. They can ask those questions, they can answer each other, you can answer them. Um, and it takes a, that out of going separately to a discussion board and actually uh, posting a question to like an FAQ forum. It keeps that conversation part of the workflow for the course. There's also, I said, collect submissions offline. What that does, it lets you create an assignment and put it as part of, say, module two in your course, but it prevents students from submitting their file and, in fact, tells them that this is something they're going to turn in in class. It might be a paper that you want them to turn in physically. It could be a presentation that they in class or a performance of some sort. It's something that they're not actually turning in via Blackboard. But then you can still create the assignment. You can still add a rubric to grade it. You can do all of the things you normally do with an assignment except accepting submissions and grading. Uh, and accepting submissions through Blackboard. It enables the grading, does not require the submissions. Sorry about that. There's also another feature that may or may not be something that you're interested in, but I've heard some 
um, some excitement from others. And that is an assignment, you can enable a time limit. So for example, let's say you wanted students to do a five minute stream of consciousness kind of journal reflection. You don't want them to spend a lot of time. You really do want them to spend five minutes uh, speed writing, get their thoughts out, and then um, just submit that for the process of doing that reflection. You can add a time limit that says, once you start this assignment, you have five minutes to write and submit, just like you would for a test, actually. Uh, you might do this as a longer assignment as well. If students have a, um, like a take-home exam that's an essay, you can use it as an assignment, but still add that time limit. I also want to point out that there are features that go the other way too. So tests and assignments are now much more closely aligned. And so some of the features of assignments are now available for tests as well. So you can see peeking out down here at the bottom, uh, I'll just draw an arrow to it, the enable safe assign option for this, this assignment. Safe assign is now also available on tests. So if students have an essay question, where they write, maybe it could be a short answer, it could be a longer essay. Um, you can enable safe assign on those test submissions so that you can get a safe assign report to see how, or how original that uh, submission was. So a couple of things that are not available um, in Ultra that are an original. So rubrics are available in Ultra and they work just as smoothly, if not more so, with um, and as they do in original courses. However, rubrics in Ultra are based on percentages for each criteria um, achievement level and for each criteria, as opposed to the current rubrics in original that can be based on points. So if your rubric, for example, says that for your first criteria on critical thinking that an, ex an excellent level of performance was worth five points and a, a Satisfactory is worth four, and a poor was worth three. Um, right now, the way that Blackboard does this, you would actually set that the top level is worth 100%, and then level two was worth 80, and three was worth 40. Um, that was a big jump. But And so right now, uh, they are planning to incorporate points on rubrics, but it's um, not coming out very soon. So in the meantime, what you would do is convert your points to percentages. Your top level would be 100. Your second level, you would divide the two values. It's four out of five and make it 80%. Um, so it's, it's a fairly easy conversion process, but a rubric can have a percentage or a percentage range. And a percentage range lets you specify that maybe it's uh, an 80 to 90% level, and you could choose whether the student's got an 80 or an 85 or an 89. Um, Again, we're happy to work with you individually if you have questions on how to, how to make those conversions. On an assignment, uh, delegated grading is also not currently an option. So if you've been using delegated grading to divide up grading responsibilities across multiple people or to have multiple people grade the same student, right now that's not available in Ultra. However, Distributed grading or delegated grading is one of their product, one of their features that is in active development. So they are currently working on it. They are going to be releasing the feature in phases, and it's actually kind of tied into their peer assessment project as well. So peer assessment is not available in Ultra, but it also works really terribly <laughs> in Original. So it's not a problem if you wouldn't want it to work the same way. They're redesigning it completely. And they're trying to look at this workflow of having multiple people grading, whether it's multiple faculty grading or multiple students grading, um, as being related and follow the same workflows and the same um, structure. So hold tight if you use delegated grading. It is on the near-term roadmap, and we should start seeing some uh, aspects of it becoming available this summer. The other feature that I'm happy to report is coming soon, but not here yet is random blocks of questions on tests. So for example, if you build your tests with 10 questions and each student should get five of those questions so that they get randomly assigned, that is currently available in Original. It is not available in Ultra right now. However, this is another feature that is in active development. It's actually 
um, phase three of a project they've been using, they've been working on for um, reusing test questions and, and building test questions differently. And they've already released phases one and two. So phase three is next and again is expected to be released this summer. Before I move on to grading, I am going to pause. I saw one question come in. So um, Maddie asked, because Blackboard Ultra integrates all of a single student's courses into one platform, what happens if one student's instructor uses Ultra and the others don't? Uh, so essentially, the activity stream will pull the data from all of their courses regardless, whether it's original or Ultra. When the student goes into the course, that's when they'll see either original or Ultra separately. So we will be seeing uh, a dual deployment here for a while where students will have one Blackboard system, but courses that might look different. Um, that's good and bad. It may be slightly confusing, but it also um, allows faculty to make a transition at their own pace and according to their own comfort level. So I think the more students who see Ultra, the more students who will be asking their faculty to move to Ultra. And over time, we'll see the number of original courses diminish and more students then will be working in Ultra. Excellent question. I also wanted to ask the group, what have you seen so far that is your favorite new feature of Ultra? Are you really big a fan in the base navigation of that activity stream? Or um, did you really like maybe the uh, time limit on an assignment or placing content wherever you want it in the course? Think about that and maybe post some thoughts to the text chat while I keep going through grading. And you can let me know if there's something in grading that becomes your new favorite feature. So first up in grading, I want to highlight that the Grade Center is now renamed the Grade Book. Um, I'm not entirely sure why Blackboard renamed it, but that's okay. Most people call it the Grade Book anyhow. The new Grade Book has two different views of your grades. So when you first go to the Grade Book, what you'll see is the List Item View. And what this does is it highlights and shows you all of the gradable items in your course. So I have right now two writing assignments and one discussion. It lets me see for each of these then how many have been submitted, how many I have to grade, and in case I need a reminder, what the due date is. So this is not due for a while. I have four to grade. I could wait out for the other 12 uh, of 16 to be submitted. Um, from here, I can also rearrange these by using these arrows to drag them up and down. And if I clicked on any of these, it would take me into being able to grade that assignment and whatever has been submitted for that assignment. This isn't the view that most people are accustomed to, though. So here in the upper left corner, I have highlighted in red this, the toggle to switch between gradebook views, because this list view is not the only view you have. You also have a traditional student uh, spreadsheet view. So here I can see all of the students in my course. I can see all of the assignments and whether they've submitted it or not. And if they've, it's been graded, what their grade was. One thing to note here is notice I can actually see all of my students' profile photos. So if they've created a profile and they've added a photo to that profile on the gradebook, I can see names and photos and start making those associations. When you go in to grade a particular assignment, this is grading a writing assignment uh, where students have submitted a file. You can see down here this um, globalization submission that uh, has been submitted. I can add a grade here in this, the, they call it the grade pill. Um, the small icon here designates that there is a rubric used to grade this. And then I can also open up a feedback pane where I can add full feedback to students. And using this plus sign, I can also upload a file back to the student if I needed to. For ultra courses only, one thing for you to be aware of is in the grading workflow, there's now a grade phase and a post phase. So when you're grading student submissions in an original course, then those automatically are 
visible to students as soon as you submit the grade. That's led faculty to do some convoluted things like hiding a column from students, entering the grades, and then making it visible. And while that works great so that students all see their grade at the same time, it is clunky for a faculty member to have to go through all of those steps. Going forward, Ultra courses will have a grade phase where you do all of the grading in one session or in multiple, and then you have the option to post those grades back to students. So here I've graded four, I haven't posted any of them. I can post them individually, or at the top I can post all of the grades that I have um, completed. I also want to point out down here, Benjamin Franklin has not even opened this assignment, and Blackboard's telling me that. It's unopened. He has not clicked and opened to view this assignment. A little bit of extra information that I didn't have before. And then in the upper right corner, because several of you commented that you really like that uh, class conversations for assignments, this is the icon telling me that there's activity in that conversation. The little purple dot means that there's something new that's gone on that I haven't gone to see. Another great feature that you can turn on or off is automatic zeros. So once an assignment's due date has passed, if students have not submitted anything, Blackboard can automatically assign them a zero. That way you don't have to enter them all in, the student gets to see the consequences of not having submitted, and then later if they submit late or um, if that automatic zero was assigned in error, you can override it and give them an actual grade. You can also turn off the automatic zero feature by going to the gear icon, which has your gradebook settings. In uh, one final thing to look at is setting up your overall grade. This is equivalent to setting up a total or a weighted total. Um, in Ultra, your only option for an overall grade right now is to set up a weighted grade. So you can see here, I can do it by the items, I can do it by categories, um, and then set up how many, what percentage each item should have. Now, knowing that right now this overall grade can only be set up with weighting, uh, the workaround to solve that is really to create a total calculation, which is one option when you create a new column. You can total on a straight point scale and then create your overall grade at 100% weighting of that total column. So it's still possible to use points. It requires a little bit of a workaround. And then that overall grade is what shows up to students when they look at that grade view um, in their, uh, their activity stream or in their base navigation. So finally, with a couple minutes left to go, we're going to zip through some of the communication tools in Ultra. So in Ultra, just as in original, you can create announcements. One um, nice feature that you have when you create an announcement is initially when you create it, it is a draft. So it is kind of a two-step process to create an announcement, save the announcement, and then you have a moment to pause before you post it. Uh, this was requested by faculty because so often you make an announcement, you click submit, it goes out to students, and then you realize that you had a mistake or a typo, and you have to go back and fix it. So this gives you a quick moment once it's actually submitted to then choose whether or not you're ready to post it. And I want to point out, you can also see how many of your students have viewed your announcement or how many have not yet been able to see it. That announcement then goes on to the activity stream. I have that highlighted here. I posted that announcement and then it shows up here in the activity stream as an update for students. And the next time they come into the course, they see that announcement as a pop-up. So they have to actually come in, see this, and then click Dismiss before they can get into the course. And this is how Blackboard determines whether or not a student has viewed the announcement. If they have more than one, there'll be toggles down here to move to the next one um, before they can dismiss the announcement pop-up entirely. That being said, one limitation is that announcements cannot be sent via email. In the current version of Blackboard, there's a checkbox that you can do so that's not available in an Ultra course. However, you can direct students to that activity stream. They'll see it as a pop-up, and Blackboard going forward will send a daily email digest of all of the activity that's occurred in all of your courses. 
So the announcement will also be included in that notification email. Ultra courses also can have announcements sent as push notifications to, for students who have the mobile app. If you want to work around it entirely and you really want to send an email to students, then I would suggest using the messages feature. So when you create a message in that uh, envelope tab in the upper right, your message has the option to go out to students as an email. So here's what that looks like when you're drafting a message. The benefit to this over using the send email feature we've always had is this message is retained in Blackboard and it can be sent as an email to students. That email feature for messages is only available in the Ultra course view. Now the reason why this is important is send email is not available in Ultra courses. So you can't go to a send email feature and choose a student or a, a subset of students and send email. But the messages feature actually can go out to students as an email, so it's basically send email, but Blackboard retains a copy, which is the most commonly requested feature I think we get about email and communication in Blackboard. One last feature to highlight for you is the discussion analysis tool. This is a new feature in Ultra courses only, so if you're using the discussion board, you can, uh, you'll see after students have submitted and while you're grading, an analysis of the level of participation that student had, and more importantly, the level of complexity or critical thinking in their post. This is done according to standard um, linguistic analysis methods. There it's scholarly research based. And if you click the I icon when you're in an ultra course, it will explain more about how these are calculated or what, what um, algorithm they're using. This is just for you to see, and it provides an example for you, more information for you to look at as you're trying to assess the student's participation within the discussion board. It's one example of the great new analysis tools that are available. One final caveat about Ultra, the blogs, journals, and wikis are not currently available in Ultra, and they will take a little bit more time to be developed. So for blogs or journals in particular, I'd recommend using a discussion board or potentially an assignment for a journal that was anonymous. Uh, for wikis or blogs in general, you may also want to consider a tool outside of Blackboard, like using Blogger, WordPress, or another wiki tool. Uh, but again, if you've been using blogs, journals, and wikis, and you're interested in what you might do to adopt Ultra, we'd be happy to talk with you about those options and how you might modify your course. I know we're at time, so a couple of details to wrap up. First, I promised I'd remind you about that Blackboard upgrade page. So here's the site to go to to learn more about this coming upgrade. It is going to occur over Memorial Day weekend. We don't have a specific date or time yet, but those will be announced to campus well in advance. We're also working on and have not yet created an instrument, a, a survey or a checklist essentially that you'll be able to use to help determine if the Ultra course view is right for you based on the features that you're currently using in Blackboard. I also want to highlight those upcoming workshops. We have a total of 18 coming up this summer and into August. You can find out more at the URL that I posted in the text chat. But if you're interested in more, we have a hands-on workshop coming up on Tuesday this next week. And then we're repeating the base navigation, the course view, and the hands-on workshops again in May. And then most of those after the upgrade throughout June, July, and August. And that course conversion workshop is starting in July. With that, um, I'm going to stick around to take any more questions and wish the rest of you a great day. And thank you so much for joining me today.